Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today we are doing the stained glass window. This is the window that I promised in my last video and this is a piece of sea glass that I found with my kids this year and this is the very first time that I paint on a piece of glass. It's a process video so it's a little bit on the long side. I do show you how I cut into the bark, fix the bark, make the frame, install the window and then all of the details that I've done here and because this part here was a process and I made some mistakes along the way after I show you the entire process, I do another mushroom on a piece of plastic. Then I show you some of the tricks that I learned along this the way. This is a 30-minute video, but you don't have to watch the whole thing. Part of it is a process that I put together for some of my Facebook page members that wanted to see how I work with the bark that's already been done, how I cut into it and put it back together and all that stuff. So I put that together for them, but you can use the clickable timestamps in the pin comment below and you can just move around the video. You don't have to watch that part. Of course, you're going to need something to draw on. You can use a plastic package from anything, as long as it's got a little bit of stiff stiffness to it and it's clear, or a piece of glass like I did. And then I use some string. This is punch embroidery thread. Uh, you can also use floss that you can get at any basic dollar store or Walmart. A pair of scissors, a felt pen, fine tip felt pen would work great. Paint brush, of course. And then the glue that I was using in this video is clear gel tacky glue, but you can also use original tacky glue as long as it dries clear. And then the paints in this video, you can use any color you want, of course. What I was using is leaf green, black, golden brown, and orange spice. And these are all acrylic paints. And then to seal your image in, you want to use a something to seal, like a clear sealer. I used a Varathane and it's a water-based product. If you have troubles drawing on something so tiny, like I was working on a tiny space, so I found it easier to trace out an image and I printed one off on Google. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it without using a printer. And because I referenced this photo here, I wanted this round circular part. So what I did was find two round things and they happen to be a couple of jars that I pulled out of a bottle dump that I found on my parents' property recently. So these are all bottles from 1920 to 1960. And I found that these two were the perfect size for tracing out two circles. And then I'm also including how I made this little wooden frame here, which is the same process I use for making the fake bark, which is aluminum foil, paper towel, and masking tape. And this is the kind I get. It's uh, from Home Depot Scotch contractor grade. And then a white PVA glue. Uh, Elmer School glue would work just as well. And then I use the same paint colors I do for all my bark, which is black, burnt umber, cinnamon brown, and then a beige. And I think that about covers it. I'm going to take you on the beach and then we'll come back here and we'll paint a window. Here I am on a beautiful day on a beautiful beach hunting for sea glass. And this is one of the first pieces that I found. And even though it's a large piece, I do bring them home because I can cut them down and throw them into my rock tumbler and make them into smaller pieces of sea glass. So essentially, I'm just finishing off the job that the sea started. All right, we'll take one last look at this glass before I tumble it for three days. I was also thinking about using this one as it is right here. So I think I'll do that. I'll just leave that there to remind me. All right, I got you on a makeshift tripod, so you might move around a little bit. I'm going to try and do this without uh, hitting my little thing that you're sitting on. <laughs> I hate bouncing around like that. I'm standing off to the side, so it's a little bit more difficult to get right in there. <laughs> Trying to give you the best view. I'm gonna move you, so I'm gonna turn you off, move you and bring you back when I've cut open the uh, space. So now what I'm doing is I'm covering all the exposed foil with masking tape. That's all I'm doing, just taking uh, pieces of tape. I'm gonna cover all the exposed foil and when it's done, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Popping in with a quick edit because I noticed that the inside wall there was noticeably very deep. And I don't want you to think that all of my walls here <laughs> are that deep because they're not. Uh, this was an add-on. So this is two layers. I had built the tree and then I changed my mind and decided to make this part here. So that's double layer. Most of my walls, when I'm all, when everything's said and done, maybe about that thick. But I noticed that this one was so deep. I don't want you to think that that's what you have to do when you're building, because you don't. All right, I got it all covered in tape, and now I'm going to take a paper towel that I've dipped in glue, and I'm going to cover that tape with the paper towel, and that just gives me a paintable surface. And this isn't going to be really seen, because I'm going to have that window is a bit frosted, so you can't really see in it anyway. But I still want to do this and paint it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure all the tape is covered with the paper towel. And once it's dry, I can paint it. All right, guys, I'm going to turn this salvaged piece of glass off of the beach into a stained glass window. And I was searching online for lead glass mushroom. 
I found this one in the images. I just want to reference some of what's on here. So I want the circle and the inner circle and I want the mushrooms in the center. What I found I might be able to do is a little jar that I pulled out of my parents' uh, property, that little dump that was there. And then here's a little inkwell pulled out of the same dump. And I'm going to use it as an inner circle because they seem to fit perfectly. I'm just going to outline it with a pen and then I'll use some paint. That's a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Wow, really shaky there. Okay, so there's my outer circle. And now I'll do my inner circle. Okay, so now I'm going to get some black paint. You know what I just thought of too? What if I put the paint on here and used it like a stamp? That actually worked. Okay, I'll do the center as well. All right, I sat it underneath the fan and now it's completely dry. And I'm just going to take a toothpick and see if I can scrape off what I don't want on there. Yep, I can do that. So I'm going to do most of this off camera, guys, because it'll just be easier for me. I need to get up close to it. It's hard to see. But yeah, let the paint dry and then scrape it off with a toothpick works just great. All right, I did another coat of paint and then I scraped off what I didn't want on there. And it's still pretty flat. So I was thinking, and this is probably overkill, but I'm thinking about putting some thread in there with glue. Just outline the uh, circles with the thread. And it'll give me that lead glass effect that I'm looking for. Popping in with a voiceover just to point out a couple things. I am filming with a new phone and sometimes I can't see what I'm doing. So my subject matter has wandered off the screen and my apologies for that. I know that's really annoying to watch. I try to remember to pull it back to center. And the other thing was I had a fan running in the background and I didn't realize how loud it was at the time. So my apologies for that as well. Well, that worked pretty well. So I'll stick it underneath the fan. Oh, first I'll do the center and then I'll stick it underneath the fan and then we'll come back and see what we got. Show you. I've changed my mind on the photo of, of reference. If I had the drawing on a piece of paper and shrunk down and stick it underneath, that would be so much easier. I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if I can do that, actually. I'll go to my computer and see if I can print that off. I'll be right back. Well, finally, I got one to fit inside my little circle there. And I'm not going to tell you how many times <laughs> I tried. A quick edit to let you know that I found a better way of getting that image underneath your window without having to use a printer and without having to resize the photo. And I show you that trick at the end of this video when I do my second mushroom painting. I mess it up a little bit, but now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to outline it with the paint. And of course, if you have a fine tip black pen or a fine tip painting pen, those two would work better than using a paintbrush. A little bit easier. So it wasn't until I was editing this video and watching everything back that I realized I probably should have painted the inside of the mushrooms before adding those little black lines, especially the ones underneath the mushroom cap. I didn't think about it at the time. I don't recall having any issues putting the paint in there, but thinking about it now, yes, the better step would be paint the inside of the mushroom and then add the black outline. So that turned out really good. I am happy with that, but I just realized I made a mistake. I shouldn't have thread at the bottom here on the inner circle. So I'm going to see if I can actually scrape away using my X-Acto knife here, a piece of the thread and then carry that stem all the way down to the bottom. And then I can have room for my other little mushrooms there. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera. I'll be back. And then repeating the steps again, I use the black paint, let it dry, add the glue outline, and then push the thread in over the black paint. So I realized that I did a few things out of order. And I didn't realize that, like I said, until I was editing the video and then it dawned on me. Yeah, I'm doing some things a little bit backwards here. So what I've done to make things a little bit easier on you is put another little mushroom painting together and do it at the end of the video so you can watch that and you can see it in the right order on which it should be done. Now this window turned out beautiful. I'm in love with it. I don't recall having any issues putting the paint in there like I said but because of those mistakes I decided to scrap the painting clips all together just to save time in this video and then you can watch the painting of the mushroom at the very end. So in the next clip for this mushroom we're just going to seal it in with a varnish. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy I decided to do this.
the mushrooms could have turned out a little bit better, but I am not complaining at all. So we're going to install it together, but first I thought I'm going to cover it with a water-based berry thing. And I just want to make sure that I don't lose any of the paint if it gets bumped or anything. So I'm just going to seal it. So I will set that underneath the fan and then we'll go over and we'll install it together. All right, because it's so wonky and it has a shape that I really couldn't frame with wood or anything, I don't think anyway. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some foil. I'm just gonna push it into all the spots that I want it to go into. And I already had uh, did this one last night with a little bit of masking tape and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to make the frame and I'm going to cover it in with masking tape. So I just mold it completely to the shape of the glass. Okay, so I just need to get some masking tape in there to hold everything together. All right, I can take this off. There we go. The bark needs something to stick to. So I want to wrap it around the front and into the back. So I'll have to tape that up as well. I'll just be careful not to wreck that mold that I made. And once I do get the tape on there, I'll bring it back over to the tree and make sure that it fits just the way I want it to. So I'm going to turn the camera off, do that. Then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right, before I put the bark on, I just want to make sure that I've pushed it in place and really push it all in. I've already done it off camera, but I've just made sure that it's molding exactly where I want it to. And I forgot to mention at the beginning that I do mix the glue with a little bit of water, just enough water to make the glue easier to work with. So I dipped a towel inside there, get the excess glue off, and then I apply it to the masking tape. But I just get both sides wet. Just gonna lay it on top here. I'll break it down even a little bit more. There's no science to this, guys. It just depends on what's easier for you as you go along. Okay, I'm gonna lay it on top and wrap it around. And then again, because I did mold this to the window, I wanna make sure that I'm going inside the mold and pushing that down. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy as far as making little lines or anything like I do with the bark. I'm just gonna lay it on like this. And all this really does is gives me a paintable surface. So I will be painting this. Some of this will be getting moss put on it as well. And yeah, so this paper towel just gives me a nice surface to work with. And one little section there to cover. And that's it. Now I'm gonna set it underneath the fan and let it dry. All right, it's completely dry now, and I'm going to be painting it all black. All right, the black's all dry, so now I'm going to put on the burnt umber, and exactly the same way I do bark. So I'm not going to entirely paint every little bit of that black, but I'm going to go over the majority of it. All right, I'll leave that dry for about 10 minutes and then I'll do cinnamon brown. And again, I'm not gonna go over the whole thing, just see how I'm going on the surface, leaving some of that dark to show through the background. And I'll let it dry for a few minutes and I'll do the final coat. All right, and this is a beige. And I just want to lightly dry brush over the surface to highlight. All 
All right, guys, I just want to talk a little bit about this installation itself because I have an advantage of it not fitting all the way in there. So it stops automatically right at the edge here. So I can't push that in. So placing this on top will keep the glass from ever popping out forward. So it's in there really solid. Now, if you were doing a different type of window and your window was like perfectly square, or perfectly round, and you have nothing behind there, you can create a little uh, lip inside out of what I just showed you, like foil and tape and then paper towel, and then you could paint it and stick it just on the inside and then you'd, your window would stop up against it. And then you can create your frame, whatever kind of frame that you're building. You don't have to build something like this. You can do wood all the way around or whatever you want. But anyway, as long as you have the window secured on the other side where it can't push through, and then you have a frame on the outside where it can't push through this way, then it's, then it's fine. Then it's installed. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I know some people are waiting to see how I installed my window. My window's a little bit different than most because like I said, it, it stops right here and it won't go any further. And this little corner here as well, it's stopping. All right, guys, I'm going to use hot glue and tacky glue. And the reason why I use hot glue, it's only used as a second pair of hands to hold everything in securely while the tacky glue dries. Doing something like this, you don't want the only thing holding it together to be hot glue because uh, once the temperature changes in your house or if the sun hits it, it's at risk of melting and letting go. Or if it gets too cold, then the hot glue could uh, get too cold and let go. Things pop apart when if you just use hot glue. So hot glue is a temporary second pair of hands. It's a wonderful tool and I use it all the time, but tacky glue is the actual glue, the actual glue that holds everything together. And sections. And in between those sections, I'll put the hot glue. Then that way, it'll suck it to the wall, the hot glue will, and then this tacky glue, once it's dry, and it's permanently in place. You notice I'm putting it on the outer edge, not the inside edge, because I don't want it to, once I squeeze it in, I don't want it to, to come out, ooze out on the glass, because that would be kind of an issue. And there we go, it's in. Yay! <laughs> That looks good. I love it. Um, the window or the window frame is a little bit too light. I'm going to darken that up a little bit with some uh, darker paint. Yeah, that's better. And once I get the moss on there, it's going to look good. <laughs> oh, I really love that. It looks so cool. All right, and I'll get some moss in there. So I'll put some tacky glue around the edges. absolutely adore that window and here comes the ladies to check it out <laughs> and while they're checking that out I'm going to show you how I put this one together using a piece of plastic and I'm going to show you a few tips that I learned along the way that might be a little bit helpful for you when you put yours together so not everybody's going to have glass to work with so what I've done is I've taken a plastic package I'm just going to cut it down to size a workable size here it's quite flexible it's not super thin but it's not super thick I use them for windows quite often and I'm using my black acrylic paint. So I'll just do my outer circle first. And I found a smaller brush that does better here so we don't get paint all over the jar. Okay, I'm gonna leave this on the desk because picking it up, I don't get a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna lay this right on top of my plastic and push. And I'll have to do that again. Okay, I'm gonna go right over that circle again. Now I'll do the middle and I'll remember that little section that I wanted to keep clear of paint so I could draw my mushrooms this time. So to do the second one, I'm going to turn it around so I can see from both sides and line it up. And you know, you don't even need to do this paint part. You can just put the string down. I like the paint because it gives a little bit of a rougher edge around that thread instead of having it perfect and kind of gives like an antique look to me. But, you know, we all have our own way of getting at things. 
All right, so we eliminated the step of tracing and just used the jars as a stamp. So I will put this under the fan, let it dry, and we'll come back and carry on. All right, so this time around, I'm going to outline with floss. So this is your basic floss that you get at Walmart or any craft store. And I'm all out of black, but I had one little strand in my stash. So again, I'm gonna use the clear gel tacky glue and trace around. Okay, and then just tap it down into that glue. Make sure there's good contact. And then cut free the excess. And then the center circle. I'm going to use leaf green. And to be completely honest with you, I did forget that I was going to paint first and then add the black thread. Uh, it works out, as you can see. And it gives me a nice border to work within. But uh, for the mushrooms, I'm going to remember for sure, we're painting first and adding the black thread after. All right, guys, something neat just happened. I was trying to get this on here and I was having some troubles because I added the paint down here and I couldn't really see what was going on there. And I was also wishing I could make this a little bit bigger. But like I said, I, in the beginning, I had troubles resizing this photo and printing it off. So I was just playing around with my phone. And if we type into Google, lead glass mushroom and go to images and I'll find that one I was using. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Okay, and now I'll just go to my images. And because I screenshotted this on an LG phone, I have to go into edit so I can move it up and down. If you're on an iPhone, it's different. So I'll just press edit and now see, I can make this bigger or smaller. And I think that's about the right size right there. And remember, whatever you don't like, you can scrape off. Just make sure it's completely dry before you do that. And I can use my toothpick to get into these little places with the paint, like these little tiny stems. I'm going to use my toothpick. I'm going to use golden brown. And that works just as well as a paintbrush on these little tiny things anyway. All dry, and I did go over it a couple of times. I can't stress enough how helpful the toothpick is. I ended up removing that entire mushroom cap at one point and repainting it on. So you can fix up anything you don't like with the toothpick. All right, and just like all the previous times, I'm just gonna outline it with this glue. And the toothpick works wonders with getting this into the right spot. All right, so I got the caps all done, all three caps. But what I'm going to do is let it fully dry before I continue on putting any more thread on, uh, just so they won't be moving around as I'm doing the little details. All right, so my string keeps splitting. The shorter it goes, the harder it is to work with. I have to get short little strings into that underneath the mushroom cap, and I could probably just paint them on, but I'm trying to do it the same way I did it the first time, just to show how I did it. So I'm soaking this in glue. I'm gonna let it dry and then Hopefully it'll be stiffer and less ravelly, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It won't split so easy. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll do that again. This is so tedious, guys, and you don't have to do this part. Like I said, I'm just trying to do it the same way I did it the first time. Just, you know, to keep it what I promised. Okay, so that glue on the string helps a lot. I let it dry underneath my fan, so it's nice and stiff. All right, gonna quickly throw this under the fan and then we'll do the final strings around the edge. And I am finding it easier to lay them in the glue and then cut them once you work them a little bit. I kept cutting them too short. And you'll notice I didn't paint first. So keep that in mind too. You don't have to add that black lines like I, I did. You can play around with the technique and make it work for yourself. Now I'm ready to seal it. And you can see the little globs of glue around the sides there. I'm just going to leave that. I did scrape off some. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because when you just look at the window like this, if once it's in place, it's not something you're really going to notice. Anyway, I'm just going to grab my Varathane. And I was thinking if you were working on glass, that clear nail polish would do the same thing. But just check it, how the nail polish reacts if you're using plastic. So it's just something you want to keep in mind. I'm using a water-based varathane. If you get the varathane on the clear part, it's going to leave a slight haze, like a frosted look, when it's dry. 
So for this one, I just put the varathane on the painted parts, so the edge, the mushroom caps, and the mushroom stems. If you would like that frosted look, then you can put the varathane on the clear part. So here we are two days later, and I just did a scrape test, and I'm really impressed on how well it holds up. So I'm pressing pretty hard with my thumbnail, and that varathane is just keeping everything in place. So I am impressed with that. I absolutely love how these turned out. I'm going to be making more of them for sure. And I hope you make one too. And if you do, please post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live or tag me on Instagram, oyella underscore crafts. All those links will be in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon.